what many people don't know over the last two years, the amount of challenges we face trying to put this together. Where we're negotiating a piece of land. And it took months to get it to where it was just right. And at the final moment, when they told us on the phone, hey, we're ready to move forward, they pull out, they pull back, and they say, you know what? We're just gonna keep it. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Mindset Mastery. I am your host, AZ Araujo, and I want to welcome you to our show. Today's topic is the steadfast approach, the steadfast approach. And, um, you know, it's been 10 days, 10 days since we unveiled uh, new headquarters for Do The Work and AZ and Associates. It's been about seven days, about seven days since I finished my first Ironman 70.3. And I'm only, I don't know, 48 hours removed from... A sponsorship we did with um, with a local uh, bodybuilding show, and you know I, I got this comment of how how do you guys continue just to to move? How how do you stay so? How are you able to handle all these moving parts? And uh, the reality of it is is uh, really building up my capacity, right? Building up my ability, building up my mindset to understand that I'm capable of more each and every every time. And um, it, it's, it's out of the, the knowing that if, if I sit still, I get bored. If I don't do or push myself to the next level, I, I will start doing things that erode that momentum, that erode those achievements and accomplishments. I know that now. I know that through my own experiences. I know it through, through what's caused me the greatest pains in my life. And the greatest pains in my life always came from the complacency in my life, the mediocrity in my life. It never came from me pushing the envelope. Yes, there were some challenges with me pushing the envelope, but really it was the decisions that came about from my complacency, right? Or of feeling like I arrived at a certain point, like there was an arrival point. Um, and that truly was when I made the worst decisions in my life, right? The worst decisions for my business, the worst decisions for my marriage, the worst decisions for, for even myself, and, and putting myself at risk, putting my uh, others at risk and, 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 you know, my marriage at risk. There were so many things that I did because I thought I arrived, right? Or I, I was at a level of complacency where I forgot that there's something else that I need to reach for. And one of the things that changed in my mind is understanding and believing that, you know, we are all anointed with a certain responsibility to continue to grow, to grow as business people to grow as parents, to grow in our relationships, to grow as leaders in our communities. And when we forget those responsibilities is when we truly start making the decisions that inevitably break down any momentum or any achievements that we built prior. Coming off this Ironman, I'm on a high. I'm feeling good. I, shattered, I completely shattered every story that I had in my mind of my ability to run, to swim, and to cycle. And to be, bring it to all together on, under one competition in one day and come out of there strong. I felt great. But it's amazing what happens when you, uh, when you achieve if you don't have another target right after that. I allowed myself to rest. It was that Sunday. I said, you know, I'm going to take sun the rest of the Sunday off, right? It was a hard day. Monday, took that day off too. Tuesday, come Wednesday. I, I'm feeling like I'm a completely out of integrity at this point. I haven't done the things that uh, put me in that position to begin with. I completely took those days off. But it's more than what we do when we take the days off, right? It's more th than what we do when we decide not to market for our business, when we decide to shut down from our relationships. It typically comes with the decisions we make thereafter or the indecisions we uh, decide not to take, right? And what I found myself doing was going back and resorting back to my lowest form of habit. I found myself going to sleep even later and later than I have previously. Since I didn't have an agenda the next morning, what's the point of going to sleep the next day, right? Going to sleep, uh, sleep early to wake up early the next day. There was no agenda at the other side. There was no target at the other side. So what do you do? You just navigate through the world as it sees fit. You allow these distractions to come through. Now I'm, I'm on social media more. I'm watching Netflix and YouTube videos more. I end up going to sleep at 11 o'clock Monday. 
11.30 on Tuesday, past midnight on Wednesday. And I'm waking up later and later the next morning. Only early enough to be able to just get ready, brush my teeth, and take my daughters to school. As opposed to giving my th myself a three-hour buffer, now I'm only giving myself a 15-minute buffer. Because there is no target on the other side. Here is this great achievement. I feel powerful. I have the capacity to continue to move forward powerfully. And to build something even greater, but what do I do? I start eroding those achievements almost immediately. Because there is no target on the other side. There is no accountability on the other side. So I only worked up to the point where I felt like I accomplished something and then I take a step back. When the game of life is to continue to push the envelope over and over and over and not to succumb to the complacencies of achievement. Many people do that. They reach a certain epitome and all of a sudden they start coasting. What they don't realize is their eating habits go down the drain. Their connection habits are non-existent. The decisions are not there powerfully anymore. The relationships start to erode. The money starts to fade. And the overall sense of purpose is no longer something you feel within. And you see this. You see those individuals lose the 50 to 60 pounds. They reach that epitome. And then they resort back to the greatest form of habit. Why? It all started with one day. They decided to take that one day off. And then that one day took, a, you know, uh, went to two days and three days, a week, a month. And before you know it, they're right back where they started. In fact, the momentum of the indecisions, the momentum of bad decisions came back so quickly that they end up gaining another 20 pounds on top of the 50 that they lost. And they're in a worse place, in a worse situation, because what we don't realize is when we build momentum, it can either help you tremendously or go against you tremendously. So if you shift that, right? When people hit that, uh, that, that epitome of losing weight, they're on a momentum. Their capacity is greater to make greater gains. But then they stop the habits that got them there to begin with. And that same momentum will not only allow them to gain that, that weight back, but it also, allow, uh, it also ends up going where they gain additional weight because it's momentum. So just imagine if we start making the right decisions because this momentum that I had and the three days that I started going to sleep later, not exercising, not doing the things that I'm supposed to do, I could erode it that quickly, but I stopped it. I stopped the drift. I didn't immediately change it. I just stopped it. I had to recognize it. I don't like the way I feel. I don't like the way that I, I feel like I'm behind the ball. I like to be up three hours ahead of most society. I like to feel dominant throughout my day. I hate feeling like I just woke up and trying to react to the day. So it's a steadfast approach of knowing I will be unwavering. in what I do. So yes, I had to allow my body to rest. I broke it down, I was sore for days. But the best way to, to, to recover is to get the blood flowing back into those same muscles that are aching. So I made a recommitment and I got a couple of guys to commit with me. And there we go again. That Thursday, we went at it hard. Friday, the same thing. Saturday. We did a five mile run and it felt like I was in my element again. I, I shifted where my trajectory was going. Listen, the momentum's gonna keep going. We already built that up. Now is it gonna go south or is it gonna continue to go up? And that's a decision we have to make. So listen, a lot of you, a lot of you are hitting these great milestones in your business. You've built the capacity to be able to handle that. Don't trip yourself on the way down, right? Usually on, on, on a roller coaster, when you're going up the roller coaster, there's a lot of anticipation, a lot of hard work, even for the machine, right? 
you hear it clicking and clacking as it's going up the machine. But then it goes free fall with very little effort. And through that free fall, it's able to, the, the machine now is able to do certain things, right? It's able to go like loops, a couple loops at a time. It's able to go into a twisty type of angle with very little effort. But it was working on overdrive, trying to get it up the mountain. And a lot of you have already worked really, really hard to go up the mountain. So you can feel the speed of how fast you can go and, and, and maneuver yourself through the next levels of your life. But you got to understand there's another uphill. You got to understand there's a lot of work still to be done. And you can enjoy the fruits of your labor, yes. But you got to understand, you got to keep the habits. You got to keep the approach. You got to keep the steadfast mindset in mind. Because when the work happens again, you won't feel like it's against you or you're going backwards. You just feel like, hey, listen, this is the next level. If I want to go through the even lower drop or even uh, farther drop down, right, on the ride, if I want to do three loops as opposed to two, I'm going to have to go much higher. And it's going to take that much work to get up there. And that's what I did. I built that up over the last 20 weeks. I built that up over the last two years, five years for my business. You see, what I showed you, the vision that I showed you was engraved in my mind two years ago. It opened up my horizons when I went to New York to, to visit Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, and I saw the size of his operation. It planted a seed in my mind. I needed to paint it. I needed to paint it on a canvas that was right for me. But it opened up my ability to become that painter. Two years ago, I saw the same vision that I was able to unveil 10 days ago. I saw the layout in my mind. I painted that out a year and a half ago with our first architect as we were thinking of building from the, top, uh, from the ground up. I honed into it. But I knew exactly what I wanted and I, and I decided that nothing, any challenge that was going to come my way was not going to stop me from what I see in my mind. It was a steadfast approach. And when I say steadfast, I'm going to go ahead and read you what the dictionary says. Resolutely or dutifully firm and unwavering. Resolutely or dutifully firm and unwavering. Well, many people don't know over the last two years the amount of challenges we face trying to put this together. Where we're negotiating a piece of land. And it took months to get it to where it was just right. And at the final moment, when they told us on the phone, hey, we're ready to move forward, they pull out. They pull back. And they say, you know what? We're just going to keep it. We're not going to move forward. The terms we agreed upon are no longer something that'll work for them. So I just wasted three, four, five months trying to get this together. Now we're only a year and a half away from our lease ending here. But that didn't stop me because the envision was engraved in my mind. It was in my soul. And when you start a business, it's got to be with that approach. Why is it that you got into the business? Why is it that you got married? Why is it that you started working out? We forget about these things. When it gets hard, when there's obstacles, when it requires you to get up at four o'clock in the morning, you forget about those things. Because there's no target after the two weeks. There is no target after completing the Ironman. 70.3. There is no target after having that vision and hearing your first no's. I had to refocus on the goal. So there we go again. We pick up another uh, uh, possibility. Great building. We're going to purchase. 
as we're going through this process, my heart, my soul, I'm hearing it clicking over there. My heart, my soul is telling me, no, this is not the place. This is not it. And to be able to unravel the weeks of negotiating based on a feeling, that takes courage. Knowing that there's something greater, a better opportunity down the line. So we cancel. A month goes by, two months go by, three months go by. Where is that new opportunity? I don't see it. There's nothing around. Regret starts to set in. Doubt. But I go back on the vision and I realize it's there. And just because these obstacles continue to put themselves before me, it does not mean it's not supposed to happen. Your challenges with your business does not mean you're not meant to be great. It doesn't mean you're, you're just supposed to sit there and be mediocre, barely making it in this industry, becoming one of the 90% of individuals that are struggling in this industry. It's not supposed to be that way. And the reason most are is because they forget what got them here. They forget that vision. They forget to speak to themselves and to remind themselves of why they were able, why they even went through school to begin with, why they got their license to begin with. The same reason so many marriages fail, because they forget. They're only focused on the challenges. They're focused on how hard it is, complaining and being victimized by the circumstances. as opposed to refocusing on the target. And because they don't, they begin that slow process of eroding everything they built, of eroding every great accomplishment they achieved through complacency, through victimhood, through mediocrity and temptations. It's the steadfast approach that will get you everything in your life. Understand then that you are unwavering and you've been in many situations where you did not waver whatsoever because you were so focused on the task at hand and yet we make it an option for our business. We make it an option for our bodies. We make it an option for our relationships. You're better than that. These obstacles are meant to build you, not to break you. These obstacles are meant to challenge you so you can learn the lessons, so you can powerfully lead your family and your business to the next level. But yet so many succumb to that. So they remain there because as soon as they start feeling the resistance, they stay there because it's too hard. Too afraid that if they push any harder, there might be something great. Fear of success is a real thing. What if it does happen? What if it does work out? Now what? But that's exactly what you wanted. So we found this 9,000 square foot building shaped exactly the way I needed it to be shaped in order to be able to put everything that I saw in my mind. And we're going back and forth for a few months negotiating on this thing. Then they stopped speaking to us. Then the COVID comes around. A lot of their tenants are, are like, stop paying, right? So they're, they're not in a, in a situation where they're so apt to negotiate. We could have given up or we, can remind, or we could have reminded them that we're still in it, that we're not going anywhere, that we've been in business since 2011. 
We can remind them of all those things. And we're ready to make something happen here. And it's insane how things happen. You work so hard for something. And then when you actually get it, you're like, oh, oh. Am I ready for this? Damn right I'm ready. And although it's the, one of the biggest decisions I'll make to this point, it's going to be comical when I look back five years from now. It's going to be a nice joke that I can tell 10 years from now about the feelings that I had getting into this building. Just like it's comical as I looked 10 years ago about how many nights of sleep I lost going into a lease for a 1,000 square foot office space. 1,000 square foot office space. The sleepless nights, the prayers, the anxieties, the stresses. And the reason it felt overwhelming is because I forgot. I forgot what I was capable of. The world and my decisions, right? The economy beat me up, left me black and blue. And I was still aching from those pains, those wounds. And all I was attaching myself to was those wounds, those experiences. And if I would have simply taken a step back, I could have reminded myself, I know what you're capable of. But when you're fresh off a of disappointment, it's hard to convince yourself, and I get it. And our approach is simple. You work on all things, so you can always be confident on the decision. So when a big opportunity comes, you strike, you move, you push. And when this opportunity came, I was ready for it. There'll always be that little bit of doubt. But what I know now is I simply took a step back and I had to remind myself I'm more than capable, more than able. I know what I'm made of. These are the same approaches that you have to tell yourself on a daily. It's what got you here to begin with? Your marriage is failing, is struggling. What got you there to begin with? What would it be like if you would just treat her with more love, respect, and appreciation? What do you think you would get back? Not just some of the time, all the time. What do you think you'll get back? If you went into your business, Focus on your marketing. Focus on connection. Focus on value. What do you think will happen? If you take the approach and take care of your body within, eating the right foods, getting your blood flowing, what do you think will happen? Getting up, reading a book, listening to positive people, surrounding yourself with those that want more. What do you think will happen? So many sit back and they don't understand. They've been victimized by the world. How did I get here? Why is everything falling apart? You're forgetting something. Forgetting about the approach, the intent, and the focus. You're forgetting the approach, the intent, and the focus. And it's a very simple thing to reverse engineer. What got you into this business? Okay, paint that in your mind. Now go after it. Why did you get married? Okay, paint that in your mind. Now go after it. It's a simple process. But it's realizing you must have the steadfast approach, an unwavering approach, that when these challenges come, it is meant for you to overcome. Not to resort to your lowest form of habit where you find yourself without a target, without any goals.
victim to the circumstances. So, I know there's going to be its fair share of challenges coming up as we try to bring this vision that we unveiled last week with our headquarters. We already faced a fair share. A contractor stopped calling two weeks into the process. Wasted two weeks. I could get upset. I can call them. And I can say, hey, you're doing everything you promised you wouldn't do. You're out of integrity. You said you were, you were going to communicate. But instead, you vanished. Or I can say this. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to see that I chose the wrong person, the wrong company to move forward with me. I'm glad it happened now and not in the right in the middle of this or at the very end when it mattered most. And just like that, we worked our, back, our way back around and found the contractor that was supposed to have this job. But it wasn't sitting in regret. It wasn't blaming. It was me pivoting because I have a steadfast approach. The vision will come into fruition. The vision will come into fruition. Had to shift. Had to pivot. So remind yourself of that. If things are not working, refocus on what got you here. It'll open up another dynamic of solutions for you. Steadfast approach. So I want to thank you for joining me for this episode of Mindset Mastery. Uh, let's go ahead and get some comments. What did it mean to you? What did it mean to you? Were you in a place where maybe you began to doubt yourself? Were you in a place where maybe you forgot what got you here? What you forgot why you, you started uh, wanted to work out or get in great shape, right? Why you wanted to work on your marriage again? Like, maybe we forgot those simple things. And once we have something to look forward to, we, we will. We will achieve. But it's, it's when we reach those achievements is not having the next target that can be as, as debilitating as never starting at all. So as you start hitting these milestones in your business, like, you're, you're not there yet. You haven't arrived yet. I'm going to encourage you. Build yourself. Build your business. Put more processes in place. What, what could happen if everything didn't rely on you but on a team of individuals that you've hired? Imagine where you can take it then. Or, or, you can feel like you arrived, put your feet up on your desk, schedule a few vacations, buy those fancy cars, and do the same thing over and over and over again. Where everything relies on you, every decision is based on you, every document must be seen by you. It's a short-lived life. It's success on the short term. Without those systems, without those processes, without automation, short term. You see, I believe anyone can have success in short terms by simply having luck, by working hard. But those that understand success over years, decades, it's because it's based on systems and processes is based on creating space for yourself. So yes, congratulations on your great months. But if you're still operating your business the same way you did before those great months, that is the epitome of your business. And slowly you're going to erode all that if you don't start building and pushing yourself and challenging yourself that you are capable of being a great leader that can have employees, 
that could have personnel to assist you. Because a one-man show, it's all based on your feelings. And guess what? Your feelings will tell you, I'm not so motivated today, so I'll shut down my business today. But running an operation goes far beyond that. All right, well, let's go ahead and go down the line. Uh, good morning to you all, Nick, Jason, Bonnie, Edgar, Lorenda, Suzette, thank you for joining me. Gabe, Gabe, preach on you are on target with a lot of issues we face daily. Rise up yourself and your family. I will therefore, I am going to leave my family. It's happening those, those simple reminders. The goal is long-term success and ma maintaining the success while continuing to build. Um, and, and that's the truth. And, and we can't operate our business like when we first started. Ten years later, have it the same way where it all relies on you. Five years later, if that's the case, then, then it's all dependent. It, it's not really a business, right? It's just a, a hustle. It's all dependent on your feelings, on, on your ability to, continue, to, to be able to manage all moving parts. When the real challenge is, hey, you need to be that leader. You need to have people under you. You need to leverage yourself because you're burning out. Raquel, this resonated with me. When things don't go according to plan, it is important to pivot and not quit, remembering why we started the journey and staying focused. So true, and I'm glad that's the message you got, and that was my full intent, that we have to have that approach, a steadfast approach, because you know, at the end of the day, we asked for this. We wouldn't be facing these challenges within our business, right, if we didn't ask for it. We wouldn't be, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, facing these challenges in our marriage and, and, and with our bodies if we didn't ask for it. So, guys, like, don't feel like it's against you. We asked for it. We must refocus on the target and move forward. I, it's still ingrained. I remember sitting on, like, the 35th floor of this building, right, and, and, and overlooking New York. It might have been much higher. I don't remember. But I remember overlooking New York and just seeing the possibilities, and I'm not saying there's any comparison to what we're building compared to, you know, where Gary V's at. But guess what? It's a step in that direction. It's not a step away from it. I've leaned in. It's a step towards it. And at that time, two years ago, it was more, it, it, it required more of a person than I was. But two years later, right now, is exactly where I needed to be. So don't give up on those big goals and ambitions just because you stumbled a bit. Refocus. And what I love is that whenever we have these visions, it was a possibility for us. We just have to continue to work for it. One man shows no growth. You have to take a leap, build a team, and realize that mistakes and problems will happen. But it's how you react when those happen and that you ensure your team doesn't make those mistakes again. And that's leadership to its core. Your experiences throughout these years have separated you from the masses. Your leadership alone is good enough to lead a team. Your leadership alone and your ability to close is good enough for, for you to get your next admin person, your next closing coordinator. If you don't, you'll see others just shoot right back past you and you won't have an idea of why or how they did it. Because you're only looking at it from a certain approach, from a certain level. Because any time it required you to grow, you, you stunted that growth. You stunted it by not moving past your comfort zone. And that's all I got. So just remember the steadfast, steadfast approach. Resolutely and dutifully firm and unwavering. Thank you again for joining me for another episode of Mindset Mastery, and I will talk to you soon.